My name is Miriam Slabi. I'm a medical oncologist at the Netherlands Cancer Institute, and uh, I specialize in uh, gastrointestinal oncology, and especially in research with immunotherapy and, and this, patient, uh, this patient population. Well, I think um, the unmet need relies, uh, lies within the patient population that we have been treating in the, in the niche trial, for example. So um, this, this is a patient population who has a tumor that's relatively resistant to chemotherapy. I think that's, uh, that's important to point out. And we've seen that a little bit in the adjuvant setting, although you don't know how the tumor is responding to chemotherapy when you give it adjuvantly. Um, but now we also have studies giving neoadjuvant chemotherapy, like the, like the fox trot study, where we see that there's pathologic responses in only about 7% of patients. That's quite low. Um, so especially when you have a tumor that's large, that you need induction, chemotherapy is not really the way to go. Of course, it's going to work in a few patients, but not in most of them. So I think that's where, where the unmet need is um, in the short term. And then in the long term, you want something that's going to prevent the disease from recurring and coming back. And of course, that will depend also on the risk of the tumor. Um, but I think those are the important unmet needs that we need to uh, cover and uh, and work on. In niche 2, we included patients with uh, MMR-deficient uh, adenocarcinoma of the colon uh, that had not previously been uh, treated. Uh, patients must have had either uh, at least a T3 or N plus disease based on radiologic staging. Um, and I think those are the most important uh, um, inclusion criteria. And uh, since it's a neoadjuvant study, um, there must be no signs of metastatic disease and also no, no signs of perforation of the tumor. Um, or uh, any obstruction, um, because then you would want to operate the patient immediately. Well, we had two uh, primary endpoints. Um, one of them was safety and the other was uh, um, disease-free survival. And what we're presenting uh, here at ESMO uh, this year is the um, safety endpoint. And the secondary uh, objective includes pathologic response, major uh, pathologic response, which is defined as 10% or less uh, viable tumor rest and pathologic complete response, defined as, well, uh, zero tumor rest in both the tumor and the lymph nodes. Um, and for the safety endpoint, we, uh, um, we calculated that at least 95% of patients would undergo their surgery um, in time, and that's within six weeks of study registration with a maximum of two weeks delay. If they would be delayed longer than that, then, uh, um, then that would count as a, a delay due to treatment-related adverse events. Um, and the safety primary endpoint was met since 98% of patients uh, actually underwent their surgery on time after the neoadjuvant treatment. I think um, that we're changing the treatment landscape, and I'm glad to see that there's more and more coming in the neoadjuvant setting in, in DMMR tumors. We started with uh, the NICHE 1 trial, which was a proof of concept study in 2016. Um, and we've shown those data, we've published part of those data, and also presented the updated data of NICHE 1 at ASCO of this year. And now we have a study which is much larger, uh, which addresses um, the safety, of course, but also the disease-free survival, which will ultimately help in taking steps towards changing the, the current practice. Um, and I do believe that ultimately, neoadjuvant immunotherapy could be a new uh, uh, treatment uh, option for these patients, especially when you consider neoadjuvant chemotherapy um, not being as successful. Well, uh, um, there, there's a big difference there. Um, we're not there yet. I think uh, we still have uh, um, uh, some things to do before we can make it standard of care and a way to go, um, but I think we're definitely getting there. Um, and it's great to see that there's other neoadjuvant um, uh, immunotherapy studies in DMMR tumors, such as in rectal cancer, uh, where um, we're seeing also very good clinical um, responses. Patients were not operating in that study. Um, so I think that the field is changing, and I think uh, more and more people are convinced that neoadjuvant immunotherapy um, is, uh, could be the way to go for these DMMR uh, tumors. It's uh, fantastic to be doing this and uh, to, to experience how this is changing so many patients' lives. So, you know, it's, uh, it's of course, the study results are great and fantastic, and uh, it's, it's nice to share, but 
I've seen most of these patients uh, myself. Um, so these are 112 patients that have been treated in the study, and every single one of them um, has had um, this treatment, has tolerated it uh, well, uh, quite well. Um, but in almost all patients, you get to tell them that their tumor was either gone or uh, shrunk a whole lot or it was completely uh, gone after only four weeks of treatment. Um, so it's fantastic to be able to share that news with your patients um, um, on an individual level. So th that makes it even more exciting. Well, I think the disease-free survival data will, will be important, um, so we need to wait for that uh, because ultimately, you know, the, the short-term results are fantastic, um, the long-term re results are just as important, so we need to wait for those to come in, um, and that's also the most accepted, uh, well, uh, pathologic response is not really an accepted surrogate um, um, in colorectal cancer yet, um, so... Um, that survival data will be important. And additional research that has to be done, well, I think validation. Uh, that's the most important research that we need to do, validation of these results. So we've done, um, well, a relatively large uh, study. Um, it's a single arm study, but I also think that it's gonna be difficult to, to do a randomized study in this patient population considering these data. Um, and well, as for next steps other than validation, I think it will be interesting to look into options for organ sparing approaches for these patients. Um, it's, a, the, it's different than rectal cancer, of course. These patients don't have very morbid um, operations, so you need to select. But there are many patients that are interested um, that would love to have the opportunity not to undergo surgery. Um, and the challenge is there is how do we assess the responses uh, prior to surgery because it's not very easy to assess uh, with uh, radiology, uh, radiologic assessment. So I think we need to develop a way to assess those responses before surgery um, using maybe CTDNA, um, uh, PET CT scans, um, and we're currently working on that. So hopefully we're gonna find a way or a combination of, uh, um, um, of modalities that will help to, to assess these responses and maybe offer organ sparing approaches in the future.